Welcome to our radio show, Faithful to the Truth, with Oksana Eliyahu, who is a Russian-born Jewish believer, a Messianic recording artist who lived in Israel for 20 years. Yeshua has said, I am the way and the truth and the life. The common denominator of our radio show is to always remain faithful to the truth. Yeshua is the truth and he is our main topic and reason for this radio show. We share music, testimonies, interviews, Bible teachings, we ask questions and try to find the answers together with our guests and with you, our listeners. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Welcome to Faithful to the Truth radio show with Aksana Eliyahu. Shalom. 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 Today, we are in Merritt Island, Florida, and we have two guests today. We have Tom Bradford with Seed of Abraham Ministries here in Florida, and we have Tom Flores from Congregation Yeshua the Bread of Life. Ah, we have yes. Tom Tom situation today. <laughs> Hallelujah! It's interesting. We would like to hear for, first from uh, uh, Tom, Tom Bradford. Uh, Bradford about uh, your ministry. <clears throat> we just wanted to kind of just a few words, like uh, so. Some people might not know you, so we would like to know maybe even background. It's always interesting. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to to uh, be on with you today. Um, Seed of Abraham Ministries began actually something like 15 years ago in a, in a, in a form. Uh, I was a Sunday school teacher at a large mega church, and uh, I had studied under a Messianic rabbi for a while, and eventually through circumstances I became head of the adult Sunday school department of about a thousand people. And um, I asked the pastor one time, would it be possible to some portion of the group, a certain class that had about 35 people in it, could I teach them the Torah? And he says, do you mean the first five books of the Bible? I said, yes. And he said, fine, go ahead. Well, we put an announcement in the bulletin, and that Sunday over 100 people showed up. Wow. Within six months, we had 200 people coming to the class, and um, it created a little bit of a political problem in the church, and we wound up starting a separate ministry. Um, and here on Merritt Island, and pretty soon it grew, and here we are. Um, it began uh, originally as what was called Torah class, and that's what most people know it as today. But as we, as God moved us along and grew us, um, we began to change form. And so today we are Seed of Abraham Ministries, and we have five pieces, if you would. Five hmm. ministries under you uh, under us okay and we have two ministries in Israel and then we have three here and what we have is that we have the seat of Abraham fellowship congregation which is where we're sitting today mm -hmm. um, that's our local congregation we have Torahclass.com, which is our online uh, Bible teaching ministry and then we also have Holy Land marketplace which is a retail store in which we purchase goods outright from Israel, bring them over here and resell them strictly for the purpose of creating a market for the people over there. It's an all-volunteer organization. None of that money supports 
any th any part of this ministry, we support it. Mm, very and then nice. in, then in Israel, uh, under us are two ministries: one called Hope for Israel, that has offices in Jerusalem, and another called uh, Love Israel, that has a facility in Ashdod. And uh, the one in Jerusalem is mo uh, is mostly a humanitarian mission with a staff of nine. And then there is a, a uh, our, our teaching ministry in Ashdod that teaches using the Hebrew language with Hebrew um, uh, materials. And the goal is to be a true outreach ministry teaching teaching and hopefully drawing the Jewish people of Israel towards their Messiah. But almost all the teaching, interestingly, is done from the Old Testament. By teaching them the prophets, it's very interesting when taught properly how it just leads you right to the Messiah. Exactly. It's part of my testimony, too. I wanted to know if uh, this teaching that you said, TorahClass.com, uh, Torah uh, available to... Uh, like you don't need to purchase, you can just uh, go and and you can find uh, the old teaching of the whole Torah. That's correct. Wow! Uh, we, Did we you hear this? Uh, Maybe we need to repeat. Yes. Torahclass.com. You can find teaching. And who is the teacher? Like mostly, it's you. Uh, it's it's myself. It's also uh, Rabbi Baruch who uh, teaches. Uh, he does most of the New Testament teaching. It's kind of interesting. We have. A Jew that teaches the New Testament, and I'm a Gentile, and I teach, <laughs> I teach the Old, That's, I teach the Tanakh. I like that. Yes, I it's like very that. interesting. Yeah. But we have hundreds of, literally hundreds, of lessons. Uh, most of them are exegetical. They, are, they start at Genesis, and they are verse by verse, chapter by chapter, all the way through. And uh, we also have videos. They come in audio. They come in text. And... We download, on average, to 170 countries worldwide. Mm. Um, so you, you even not just uh, uh, can listen, but you can even download it? Yes, you can. It's all free. It's 100% free. There's not a thing you can buy. Mm. Uh, it's been a heartbeat of this ministry from How the How long did it take you to you know, record all Well, the... we're still doing it. <laughs> oh, you're still doing it. But we've been doing this for about 10 years. It's about amazing. 10 years, I would say. But then that brings us to what what is so. So your basic wa was that you actually studied from a rabbi. I said, mm -hmm. can can you just maybe a few words? Sure. What kind of rabbi? No. We have so many you know different rabbis and. Well, this was a messianic rabbi here uh, on Mer Merritt Island, but I was also very fortunate in that I made some friends um, in Israel, and one man that became one of the most interesting mentors to me, is not a believer in Yeshua, but is one of the most gentle, wonderful, brilliant men. His name is Gershon Solomon, who's the head of the Temple, Temple Mount, Mount. Faith, Faithful in Israel. And he and I, through just an act of God, became very good friends. And I have learned so much from Gershon. And um, so that was a big help to me to it, it gave me the the true Jewish side unfiltered and that was a very big help to me uh, to to begin to understand more and more and the rest of this came from volumes and volumes and volumes of study and research uh, that I've so, done but over you the past like 15 you, years you were born in a Christian family or you were in darkness like I was and <laughs> No, 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 no. I don't remember a time in my life that I didn't know who Jesus was. I was oh, born into nice. a wonderful Christian family, uh, loving, affectionate, and we, oh. were, we went to church. And I would like to say my family lived that life. And but, we see the fruit today, you see? Well, yes. How it's important to start from the family, you know, this is how the real fruit comes. It's not the only way, but it's a way. Yeah, it's a but way. But 15 or 18 years ago, when I was introduced to the Torah, it just opened up a whole nother so window So before that, you didn't world. even uh, read the Old Testament? Not at all. I was a typical Christian. Did you know that uh, Yeshua is... Uh, 
uh, a Jew? I did know that, but I have to say that it really didn't make much impact. It was a remote concept. I would say like so many typical Gentiles going to church, that Yeshua was an everyman. He was this unusual creature who almost didn't have a race or a heritage. He just, he just was. And um, where he was from and his heritage and it just didn't have any impact on me at all. Wow, interesting. I want to ask, uh, before we go to uh, Tom, uh, Tom Flores, too. Tom, yeah? too. <laughs> Tom too, uh, like I, maybe it would be a hard question. Like, could, I know you, you study so much and you do all this uh, teaching. Do you have a part of the Oparasha that this is like really the most uh, uh, important for you or the most you love? Or I know it's hard. That's, I knew that it's a hard question. That is a hard question. Um, for me, as strange as it may sound, there's, there's, I, I, I would say it begins actually with a, a, a statement from the Brit Hadashah, from Yeshua in Matthew 5, 17 through 19, in which he says, I didn't come to abolish the law of prophets, I came to fulfill them. And it was that that then drew me to the law of Moses. And it may sound, it's the strangest thing to say for a Gentile, but I would say the book of Leviticus, for me, mm. is, one of, is one of the things that impacted me the most. Not because I suddenly believe that the law saves you. The law does not save you. Right? The law is, the law, uh, the law of Moses is there, though, to show a saved person how we ought to behave and live our lives. That's what it's there for. That was a huge revelation for me. That's why it's very kind of, it's a treasure part. Like the most. It is, it is, I have a way to live now. It's not just whatever it seems like my, my, my heart wants me to do at the moment. I have a guideline. Yeah, it's not just, oh, oh it's the Holy Spirit told me and it's not even correspond the, uh, the writings, which a lot of, unfortunately, we can hear today. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Maybe we'll put a little uh, short, uh, you know, uh, break. We will hear a song and then we will continue. Shall it at me? 
מה ישוע היה עושה אילו היה במקומי? הוא הדוגמה שלי, הוא חוד החנית, הוא זה שבירך אותי בכל ברכה רוחנית. הוא הדוגמה שלי, הוא חוד החנית, הוא זה שבירך אותי בכל ברכה רוחנית. אלוהים רוצה להתפאר דרכנו, אלוהים רוצה לשכון בתוכנו, אלוהים שפך עלינו את חסדו, כדי שנעשה הכל למען כבודו. כך גם אני אחיה, מה שישוע עשה, גם אני אעשה. הוא הדוגמה שלי, הוא חול החליף, הוא זה שבירך אותי בכל ברכה רוחנית. הוא הדוגמה שלי, הוא חול החליף, הוא זה שבירך אותי בכל ברכה רוחנית. אתה הדוגמה שלי, אתה חוד החנית, אתה זה שבירך אותי בכל ברכה רוחנית. אתה הדוגמה שלי, אתה חוד החנית, אתה זה שבירך אותי בכל ברכה רוחנית. to the truth radio show today our guests are Tom Flores and Tom Bradford now Oksana you have a question for Tom Flores I believe yeah Shalom Tom Shalom, Oksana. so you guys two Toms and I understood that it was kind of a divine appointment something brought you together we still didn't understand so we, this is what I would like to know like what do you think uh, How, how you met and, and what really is the connection? When in reality the connection came about through a mutual friend, uh, a mutual brother and uh, his wife were attending Torah class for some time and uh, we met, uh, we met in, in the synagogue and uh, we started talking and he, they were the ones that turned myself and my wife to Torah class. And as we started studying, we couldn't get enough of it. And uh, so... So you literally came to the class? No, or it we, was through the through website? Through the website. Uh-huh, okay. And I would download it in my iPod. I, would, I travel a lot. So as I travel, I always get this in the car. I will study. And then I was encouraged through um, this uh, mutual friend. And uh, to do so, any opportunity that we got. And as... The more we did, the more we wanted. The more we wanted to know more and more. Because uh, my background also is uh, like Tom's. I mean, I grew up in a home primarily Christian. My mother is a uh, PK or a preacher's daughter. My grandfather. PK? Yeah, we call it PK. She's <laughs> <laughs> a preacher's daughter. Oh, okay. Uh, my grandfather. Preacher's kids, yeah? Yeah, preacher's kid, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, she... Um, She grew up with a father who was a Pentecostal and a and, uh, pastor for more than 50 years. And uh, so even when I was not quite doing what I was supposed to be doing, I never forget that even the, I could be the worst heathen you can talk about, but I never left without having my grandfather's blessing. Aww. It was important in my life because I knew he was a godly man. So... Uh, I remember uh, thinking once and said, you know, I know, God, you know, that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but I don't want to be so far away that I can't see the line that takes me back to you. 
you know, that oh, was some, some that. thoughts, some thoughts that come into your mind. So to this mutual friend, uh, we started studying Torah, and uh, my wife and I were in transition from being in a Christian church all this time, but we were looking for more. And uh, Miriam, who was my wife at the time, was uh, also being touched, especially with, um, I guess, I don't know if she has spoken to this uh, to you about, through a, uh, she had a vow, and then God asked him to do this vow. And for a time, she was going through this, and she didn't quite understand why the Lord was leading it to this. Over time, it was revealed to her. And at the same time, we were searching. We were searching, you know, you know, God, we, you know, it's not really happening where we're at. We see this. We're wanting more. Where is it that you're trying to lead us? We went to a Pesach celebration, and uh, our eyes were like, opened for the first time is to say, you know, we see Messiah and all this, we see Jesus and all this. Why was this presented to us always as something just for the Jewish people? I mean, they don't see that their Messiah is in the middle of that. It's all about it. Because we were painted this picture of Easter, we didn't have the connection. We had Easter, but if we thought about it, Easter as a Christian, not a connection with the Jewish people. It was a totally separate feast for us. So when we saw that, and they said, well, we want to know more about it. And so that's what we kept on pressing to find out more and studying more. Um, it took us a while, and then we finally made it. We made it to a, uh, uh, a synagogue, we, a Messianic synagogue. And uh, when we went there, it's interesting how we had met people who were going there. And we were very impressed. And they never told us where they were going. And... Uh, it was this person who actually inspected our home. And when he walked into our home, he said, you guys are Christians. Do you want to receive a blessing? And they said, of course. We, uh, you, know, you know you're Christian. They said, yeah, well, bless your home. So he lifted up his hands and gave us the ironic blessing over us and then over our home. So and who was this? He was, the, he was a part of the band or a drum player of that Messianic congregation. We didn't know. And, and months no, afterwards. No, but he, he, he was a An worker, inspector, yeah, he was an inspector, inspector of, for the, uh, of the building. Oh, okay, okay. So he blessed that home, and, and we were, you know, we kept in touch. But we didn't know his congregation. We just happened to show up one night, and there he was, sitting How in the this drums. little prayer <laughs> that person, you know, initiate yeah. can, <laughs> you know, change and bring you all this way. Wow. And it was like... We have been friends all our life. We hug and all this other stuff came about. And they said, this is where you're at. So we, we basically embraced and we wanted to learn. We, we thought, uh, when we walked in there, we thought, you know, we found the place. This is where we're going to be. And uh, the Lord kept us, you know, showing us. And, and we kept on having a hunger for the word like never before. And we were studying. Not only when we got in synagogue, I mean, with synagogue we had, uh, mostly the Rashik, and we are learning more of the Jewish culture because not my wife and myself didn't grow up Jewish, you know. We grew up in the islands. It's, uh, and uh, we ended up learning and learning more about How the culture. How many years have you We were there um, uh, over three years, mm -hmm. over three years. Uh, but it was intense. Whatever we had at the time also, we haven't really separated completely from the church. I did. I was, but my wife was still going and doing translation for the church on Sundays. So we were going to synagogue Friday, Saturday, and she was going to church to translate Sunday. So it was all we could get crazy. <laughs> so finally, finally, uh, I was the one that needed to kind of peel back a lot of my uh, indoctrination and traditions that I have from the church. So I was the one always, unlike Miriam, that had these filters. You know, I needed to make sure this was right, or needed to make sure this is right. And one day, uh, Miriam was desperate because Miriam wanted me to make the move. And one day she asked the Lord, what, you know, what should I do? And the Lord said, well, go today and ask him, ask him for a year. To give you a year here, and uh, so you can, also com com complete this vow that she had. So okay, I, I didn't uh, understand about the year. The year so she asked me. Miriam 
came to me. you, Miriam, your wife, uh -huh. came to you to ask what? A year to stay there because I wasn't quite convinced. Because I was still looking. A year searching. just to go to the synagogue. Messianic synagogue yes. and uh, not really to the church. To the church, correct. Mm, okay. Because I was still debating some of the things I wasn't. So I told her, for you, yeah, I'll give you the year. <laughs> Good husband. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the year. So I gave her the year, and basically in that year, probably it was it was more for me than for her. Uh, the uh, the amount of of uh, encounters, the amount of uh, peeled back that I did from what I was to where God want, wanted me to go and leading me through was incredible. Uh, I met people uh, like Tom. Uh, Bradford here. And we will come to this, but before right. that, I want to ask you, you said encounters. Can you tell us about <laughs> just one of it? Well, basically, I encounter many people, but one of the things that I encounter is how, the way I look at it is how much of a life of a Christian, how many flaws I had. Because my encounters was encountering myself against the Word. When I went back to the Word, and study the word in the proper context and that how it was written is that I was in left field. I was totally lost in comparison mm -hmm. to what the word said. So my encounter was more hitting myself with against the real word of God versus what I thought was the I right love thing. that. I yeah. love that. So anytime it was like I described it, it was like peeling back layers of paint in a car and getting it down all the way down to the middle. Mm -hmm. I had so much of that paint on me that it, I could make this verse or that verse or that verse and make something out of it, when in reality, it was all out of context. Wow, so, it was something like you just hearing people actually mm -hmm. teaching you, you never uh, went to the original uh, writings and yeah, actually yeah. check it out if they And they even I can read it out bits and pieces. But bits and pieces didn't give me the whole context. Mm -hmm. So that, what to me, was like, that's why once I started doing that, I went for initially a period that I was upset. Because you got to look at it from the standpoint. I, I grew up in a, in, in, you know, basically from a, a church family. And, it, and some of these things were basically passed down. So I grew up upset, like, who lied to who or who made this and why? Up? Yeah, and why? So, and I got to a place in that walk when I looked back and said, okay, I'm beyond being mad. I'm now having mercy because I don't want any more of those people just missing so much. I don't want them missing what I've got now. So it turned it around and made it like, now I have compassion and mercy for those people because they think they're doing the right thing. It's not that they don't want to please God. What, for example, one thing, if you remember, was really like you felt you are missing something. What, well, for example? Well, I was missing. I was missing the feast. How much are you know, missing the feast? I mean, how can we leave the feast in the context that that's only for the Jewish people? Yeah, because this was, they say, that it's Jewish. It's, no. not, it's not just Jewish. No. It's, it's Lord's festival. It's, 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 exactly. It's, it's God's feast. God's so, feast, yes. So, to, to me, it was like, Look at this, I would have had a whole year worth of stuff and I'm missing out all my life. And when I and we get connected to that, it gave it gave us a better perspective of both why the Bible says some of the things it said, because they're connected. You can't separate them one from the other. It's like puzzles that yeah. start coming together the, yeah. the real picture. The real picture. And uh, so that took a while and uh, Miriam and I basically went into intensive uh, study and guidance and uh, through this mutual uh, friend this, uh, in uh, it was a Hanukkah celebration mm -hmm. uh, and just like now was, still, we just... It, it was coming also they were still in the old building at Torah class and uh, we were talking to this couple and they say well we got to leave we were together in a conference we got to leave because we're going to go to a Hanukkah celebration and said really and my wife said well why are you leaving us I mean and she said, well, we got to go to this Hanukkah celebration, Jonathan Sattel is singing. And my wife said, like, Jonathan Sattel, we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said she felt bad because she self-invited herself. And it was, and they were packed. I mean, they were a popular ministry, and they were packed. And uh, my friend uh, told me, he said, let me give Tom a call. 
So he called Tom because it was by uh, okay, Tom, we, we, Bradford. Okay, Tom Bradford. yeah, we need to tell, otherwise yeah. it's confusion. Yeah. yeah, let's give Tom Bradford a call because I think that, you know, it's full and or everything. He said, no, no, don't bother, don't call him, we were sorry. <laughs> But he went and went, we went ahead and called, and, 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 and Tom so graciously, and Becky as well, said, no, bring him over. And uh, we were, to our surprise, uh, we sat right next to Tom and his family and his table, and we had a great time. That was uh, that Hanukkah celebration. And since then, since then, we've made a connection, obviously, even prior to me, uh, obviously, uh, coming to that celebration, we were studying heavily on the Torah class. It's a project to him. Uh, made a big impact, and as soon as we connected to that, it's made a great impact for our lives. And we, any person that we do uh, encounter that have that desire to really learn the Word of God in the proper context that it was written, and to really get deeper into the Word, and they want to seek the Lord, we ask, we point them to Torah class. It's a great resource. It's a free resource, and that's how initially we got connected. Yeah, but now you are doing even more, and I'm doing I would a little like bit more. Share. Yes, because uh, the time passed, and the Lord had placed in our hearts that it was time to move out. We didn't know what He had in in uh, in His plans. We thought initially that um, initially he said, "Well, we'll start going over to Merritt Island. Is our friends over there at uh, at Cedar Bay Ryan Ministry?" And uh, until the Lord tells us and guides us to, uh, on our next step. In actuality, that was for my birthday, uh, March uh, two years ago, and March 16th, and um, we met at our home. It was a sh uh, we met for Shabbat with some friends at our home, and uh, since then our home became a place where people came to learn the Word of God and uh, celebrate so Shabbat. Doing a, a small group, kind of. Well, yeah. that's what they wanted. I didn't intend it, but they just kept on showing every Shabbat. They said, can we do it next week? Can we do it next week? And I said, well, well, okay. So we didn't even have a chance to go to visit Tom Bradford up in Cedar of Abraham because our home kept on getting visited by other people that wanted to learn more about the Word of God. And like I said, that's been, you know, this March it will be two years. Our home became basically a uh, home fellowship in which people came every Shabbat. And uh, we outgrew our home. Uh, and by the following m March, then we got a, a small little place in which now we can all meet. And uh, <laughs> we're basically nine months into our lease and it's becoming tight to, uh, to yeah, stay we, in this place. We celebrated Hanukkah mm -hmm. in uh, the... It, uh, Yeshua, the bread, of life. the bread of life, and it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful place, and you also uh, use the uh, English and Spanish yes. language there. Yeah, we do translate. And, uh, yeah, and you, you, you. This is how I understand there is more even to this translation going on. Yes, because we have. Uh, at least my wife and I have been privileged enough to be bilingual. And we were able to get this resource uh, that uh, Seed of Abraham Ministry Torah class had provided for years through the internet free. But we know there's a very large portion of the population who are not bilingual, and this is a resource that goes on in the internet. And the internet goes worldwide. So we had a burden that, and a lot of people going to us, they said, this has got to be in Spanish. You got to do this in Spanish. And I know. It is a big project, and uh, for Tom, it is very difficult. He doesn't necessarily speak Spanish, so you have to be, uh, in a sense, very zealous to the context and the content of the work uh, because it's very precious. We want yeah, to be connect able to it exactly right. and understand very well. So it took us oh, a little while. Uh, I did ask him once about the project, and he said it was very, very expensive to do, as I recall. You yes. recall that? Yeah, I do. And uh, so we kept on adding, I kept it in the back of my mind, and uh, more people came to ask us, can we do tour class in Spanish? They said it's very costly. Even if we got some volunteers, there's still cost involved. Well, to make a long story short, somebody came and said, well, 
I'm sure you can make a program out of this, but the Lord gave him a dream, and this dream was that he was going to, in a in synopsis, he was going to provide some of the funds to be able to fund that project. Like happened to you, I believe, right? You remember that? So he came up with the uh, funds, and we started, and we made up some uh, acquisitions of software and hardware so we can start doing the uh, translation. We did, in faith, we haven't asked Tom yet. <laughs> we haven't asked Tom yet. And we brought in at least five of his lessons already translated to him and, and told him, you know, this is what the Lord places in our hearts. Will you be interested in this? We are doing the translation. We promise we're gonna stay true to the context. And um, the funds are coming from a, uh, a donation. So you you do it in a, a like a, some kind of recording equipment? We do it just like he does uh, initially. They put it in a format that is written, like a word format or something like that, and it's uploaded uh, by his uh, staff to their server now. So you have Spanish. it actually written, written, printed everything? Printed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the next step would be even uh, uh, read, read it. it. Mm -hmm. And you read it, do you have already Something no, available. That, portion, that portion will come later. We just started this, as a matter of fact, was two weeks? Two, three two weeks. weeks yeah, about two weeks ago. It just said it finally made transition to make it to his website. So this is very, very New. recent. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, obviously, it is a great blessing for us to have the opportunity to have that material and to put it into Spanish because we know we're going to be reaching millions with it. Wow, Spanish that's speakers. amazing. So that's our connection. <laughs> so I would like you maybe to share a little bit more about your congregation. Sure. So now you you actually lead in a congregation. Yes. You meet uh, on. Uh, we meet on on Saturdays at 11:30. Uh, right now, both my wife and I work uh, full-time jobs. Uh, so oh, we have a small fellowship. Uh, uh, Shabbat is uh, where we want to meet because during the week it's very difficult. I travel quite a bit, as you well know. <laughs> so uh, right now that's why the, the Lord has given us the energy to do so, and we're doing and being faithful to that. And he's bringing the people. We, mostly we got a combination, whether Jewish or non-Jewish, uh, lots of people that are bilingual or Spanish speakers only from different countries, uh, anywhere, Peru, Mexico. So it's been giving him the, uh, the love for them to learn. Mostly my, my take in, in Shabbat is obviously we do it because we want to praise the Lord. We want to set up our, ourselves for his worship. But we do it also because we want his word. So when we get together for Shabbat, we, we open Torah, we, have to, we study his word, we study the prophets. It, it's to immerse ourselves in the, in the word. That's, that's our desire to do. Um, and that's usually the dynamic. It's a smaller uh, fellowship congregation, so we do have interaction. Yeah, so you even, I, I, I heard you asking, okay, do you have questions? <laughs> so people can actually yeah, ask you questions have and uh, have discussions? We have discussions, yes, we have interactions. The environment right now uh, is, is appropriate. If it grows any bigger than that, it might just be a little bit difficult to maintain. But right now, it's, it's good. If it grows any bigger, then we might have to break it down in smaller uh, groups in order to maintain that kind of dynamic. But uh, that's ba basically how we get together on Shabbat. Is we, this year, we decided in this cycle of the Torah is to tie the Torah to the prophets, to the Haftarah. So we emphasize the Haftarah reading and why the chassad, the sages, have chosen it for that particular parasha. And then we bring where in all that is Messiah into the, into the teaching. That is that I also, I don't really understand, but I heard you guys were speaking 
that there are a lot of different Spanish like dialects. Mm -hmm. So like I don't know, like you're gonna choose one of them and use. We we try to stay to a neutral uh, type of uh, of Spanish, not regional type of Spanish. In other words, there might be a lot of terms that are only associated in a particular region, but you stay neutral to basically Spanish or what's called uh, Real Academia Española, which is basically the entity that rules over the Spanish language. So you try to stay true to those terms, then it will transfer to most of any Spanish-speaking country. So it's actually uh, every a Spanish speaker would be able to understand yes. and to read and to read as well. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. That means you stay away from, unless we're talking about in context, about Hebrew idioms and stuff like that, we don't use it necessarily that same uh, structure and use an idiom to de describe it in Spanish. We try to stay true to the context, it's true to a true Spanish, neutral. Spanish stuff. So do you have uh, also like uh, some kind of beloved parasha? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I probably have several, but you know what? Uh, in, my ex in my experience, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the people that touched my life, you've met, his, his name is Ron Warren, who you've met, and uh, he's the one that uh, he said he met me before he saw me. But, uh, Maybe you share a little bit. So, I think it's interesting. Story. Well, yeah. Well, that was before. Yeah, we actually, we also well, uh, done a radio show with Ron even before we met Tom. Yes. So it's kind of connection now, very interesting. Maybe yeah. if you would like uh, one day to, to hear Ron's uh, uh, show, you can go to our archives on our website, www.oxanasite.com, uh, O-X-A-N-A. S I T E dot com. Well, the connection with Ron is that um, when my wife and I showed up to the Messianic congregation, we met this uh, older fellow who was teaching. Who was teaching, and I was drawn to him to his teachings, and uh, I, I was just craving, craving the word of God, and craving the teachings. So I asked them, "Can you give me some of your teachings, or give me that teaching you just gave, or something like that?" And uh, he said, sure. And he pulled the teaching and gave it to me right there. Uh, and after a few of those times that he did that, I started questioning. I said, why? Why is he giving me all this material right off the bat from what he's carrying in? So I, I went to him and said, what? You know, I, I understand I am bugging you and, and ask, constantly asking you for this teaching, but why, why should you readily get, give me all your stuff? He said, he looked at me I, in, in the eye and told me, do you really want to know? I said, uh, yeah, that's why I asked you. <laughs> and he said, well, before you walked into the congregation a week ago, I saw your face. And the Lord told me, you have to teach this man everything you know. And he said, I looked at him and I said, are you sure? You must have <laughs> seen somebody else. It wasn't me. He said, no, you asked me, so I'm telling you. He said, and I don't use the Lord's name in vain. I mean, this doesn't happen in my life. I can count it with one hand, and I got fingers left. He told me I must teach you everything that I know, and I'm doing that. He said, oh, okay. But you know what? At that time, I was just taken by the uh, revelation, but I didn't really think it was me. I think he's mistaken. I think he's mistaken. So I kept, but I kept on asking him, and he kept on giving. Little did I know, because this is at the very beginning. Little did I know where I was going to be today. I didn't know any of that. Why? Because I'm, I'm a professional. I, uh, I, I don't. I don't necessarily was somebody who was thinking that I was going to be teaching Torah or teaching the Word of God. No, that wasn't a thought no, in my mind. No, but God put this passion in your heart. But he put me in a passion to learn the Word of God yeah. and, 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 and to seek Him. So I didn't know it at the time, but he was just basically preparing me. Because when I left synagogue and went to my home, I said, well, God, what, 
was our next thing. I was enjoying myself because now I'm passionate for the Lord. I'm learning the Word in the true context. I'm loving His Word, and I want to. And, well, this is, but He's the man that told me, to said, you're going to be like an eagle. But you know what happens to an eagle? An eagle is fed and fed and fed. And then the mother comes and destroys the entire nest. They said, fly. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and if you're going to fly, you're going to have to stretch out your wings and soar. And the day, and th he told me that years before, the day is going to come, you're going to get pushed off because you're being fed. <laughs> I didn't know that day was going to come so fast. But um, that's where we're at right now. And he... He's a dear friend, obviously. He's a friend of the congregation. He comes and visits. And, uh, and I'm still, obviously, um, we have a, studying, a, a together. studying together on Thursday nights. Yeah, yes. but I, I asked you about Parasha, and this was before. So Bereshit. And Bereshit. I tell you why. Parasha, Bereshit. When I looked at those first seven words of Bereshit, and it said, Messiah is there. No, it isn't. Isn't it? Messiah is right in the middle of it. At. Part of what this ministry where we're standing is, beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega in Greek, it's right there in the at. Messiah is the beginning and the end. And when people don't realize that the Bible, they, they only look at it starting in Matthew and when Messiah, Jesus, shows up, and then they realize it's within the first seven words that God's perfect plan of redemption was put already there. It was already there. All you needed was to, like Tom Bradford said, peel back the onion a little bit, and then you start seeing him. So for me, there's, yes, it's multiple part of shots, but right there from the beginning, when I started discovering that, I was taken, uh, I'm, I'm all his. I'm one to know more. That's that's one. That's one that I hold dear because that kind of took me by surprise when I said, "No, I can't believe he's in there." No, he is in there. He is in there from the beginning. Because I always worked, always was taught, well, he is the power in the creation with the ruach hakodesh. Is it? No, he's beyond that. He's God. He's God. He's one. Okay, we have just a few minutes left, so I would like you guys just kind of give us uh, maybe like uh, some kind of conclusion or some uh, real short words that you would like to, uh, you know, just to maybe say uh, your website again and how people, will, if, if they would like to know more, connect with you. Okay, so maybe you start. Okay. Uh, for us, you can either find us at uh, Congregation Yeshua the Bread of Life or uh, for the Spanish speakers, Congregación. No, but Pantera. where, where? It, it, they, uh, it's, it it's in all Winter Garden, Florida. But on the website is congregation, Yeshua the Better Light .com, or in Spanish, Congregación, Yeshua el Pan de Vida .com. We own both names. And uh, uh, you can find there the ministries that uh, we're currently supporting and we're connecting with. But one of the biggest things that we have right there is the ability that from our website is to go right into the teaching website where we join with uh, Torah class and Tom Bradford to have the Torah class in Spanish. So whether you go to Torah class or you go to JeshuaTheBreadOfLife.com, you can still link and go to the teachings where you can find Torah How class long is usually your class, uh, Tom? Generally, 45 minutes, plus or minus. Well, it's exactly uh, what uh, what we need. I was thinking maybe if uh, you would be okay with this, maybe one day we just, uh, uh, you know, kind of advertise one of the class and see <laughs> how people will get more hungry and thirsty, you know. It well, would I, be I, would, I think that would be great. Uh, Again, which one you would have to decide? Yes, yes. <laughs> or I, I, I'd, I'd let there be a vote. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, uh, we would. We just invite people. Tom has said this, I think, more eloquently than I, I ever could. But um, TorClass.com is the place for people online to start. 
we're located in, uh, our congregation is located in, in Merritt Island, uh, Florida. And of course, anyone that's within driving distance, we invite you to come. We meet um, Saturday nights, and we also meet two times on Sunday morning, but we have other things going on as well here. I won't go into all that. But we also have another website called seedofabrahamministries.com. And the reason I bring that up, that seedofabrahamministries.com, is that on that site, it tells you about all five of the ministries that are under us. So you can get, kind of get an idea of, of what we are. But I think the most important thing I want people to hear is this is all free. This is a, a, a labor of love of, of the people here. And um, the whole point is to get the word of God out in its biblical context. And we take, as I say in every lesson, we come at it from a Hebrew roots approach, simply meaning the Bible is a Hebrew document from beginning to end. And we try to present it that way. And that gives us the context, but we get into Bible history, we talk about many Jewish terms, these are long lessons. So even people who don't have a clue and everything would be new and maybe would it be too much, too heavy, or actually it would be, uh, you, you think, possible to kind of get, or they, they must uh, probably start from the beginning. Yeah. They need to start at Genesis 1-1 and not move around. Oh. I, I caution people because if they'll do that, they'll find it's just like going to school. Okay. Okay. Anyway, Tom and Tom, thank you so much for being here with us today. It was absolutely a pleasure to meet you and to be uh, spend this hour with you and hear about your ministry. We hope to do more uh, shows with you, and for sure, if you give us permission, we would like to introduce our listeners to your teachings. It'd be Maybe our pleasure. when Spanish would be ready, we can put one in Spanish as well. With your beautiful voice. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Oh, Abba Elohim, God of Israel, you are so good. May your name be glorified. We love you and we praise you. Baruch Ata Adonai. Baruch Ata Adonai. Please invite us to your congregation, and we would love to come worship with you in English, Russian, Hebrew, and Spanish. And I would be so delighted to share with you my powerful and encouraging testimony. Please visit our website, oxanasite.com. O-X-A-N-A-S-I-T-E dot C-O-M. Please contact us by email, faithfultothetruth at gmail.com.